Island Doobie here. What's the play for today? Well, today I am playing with the Groove Tool. Now, the Groove Tool, this is by Artsy and was sent to me for the Blog Hop with Stencil Girl Products. What it is is a neat little gizmo. It takes a couple of batteries and you put the attachment on and then turn it on and it goes round and round. It comes with four different attachments. This one's the brush. Then you've got uh, the foam and then there are two different sanding discs of different size. They just come right off, easy to use. Well, come take a look and see how I use this in my altered book journal as I experimented around to see what this little thing can do. Here's the altered book that I'm gonna be working in. Basically what it is, is it's a book that I'm using as an art journal. I can prep the pages if I want to or not. It's not like there are a whole lot of rules to this. So I turn to a blank page and yes, I work out of order. I just open to a page and that's the one that I use. I want to get some color down here, so I'm going to use that groove tool that I talked about. I'm going to put the brush on for the tip. Oh, and it does come, here are the four tips that it comes with. Two sandpapers, one coarse, one fine, a sponge, and then the brush. You can put the paint on this however you want. I'm actually, oops, I'm going to start with this color. I am going to put it right onto the bristles. That saves me a step. And then I'm going to just put this right onto the page. Going to turn it on and start smearing color around. And you can see, you can hear how loud it is. When I started and I had a lot of paint over here, it's very thick and full coverage. Over here where it starts to dry out, not really dry out, but there, there's I've used up the paint. There's not as much paint. I get this very sort of uh, sketchy, dried up kind of, not dried up, but I keep saying dried up. I don't mean dried up, but running out look. You can also take this and dip it right into paint, if that makes you happy. And so I can put it right in there with that, or I can smear it around in other places. The hardest thing for me when using this tool is to actually let the tool do the work. Because I have a tendency to want to push down really hard. If I push down really hard, the, the motor has to work, well, extra hard because I'm creating that force. So what I need to do is just really lightly move it along. And that's something that I had to figure out because I'm one of those people that has a lead foot when it comes to paint, using a brush. So for me, that was the very hardest part was actually letting the tool do the work instead of my hand doing it. Next color I wanna use, let's see, I'm gonna bring in a stencil. And this one is from Mary Nasser. It's one of her It's a Small World globes. I'm gonna bring in a darker color. And could I put this right onto a palette? and do it from there, yeah, I could go like this and then pick it up that way. But I prefer to just actually put it right onto the brush instead of using the palette, but you can do it that way. So I'm gonna hold that stencil down right where I want it, and then I'm just gonna let the tool do the work. Remember, the hardest part for me is actually letting it do the work. I'm gonna go grab some more paint. Over here. And remember how when the green dried up, ran out, whatever I want to call it? Well, that's going to happen here with the blue. So I can put little bits over here. And the less pressure that I put on this, the lighter the color. The more pressure, the darker the color. Which that probably makes a lot of sense to you. Lift up my stencil. Well, the next clay that I want to bring in is orange. And if I've got all this blue and I'm going to work with orange, guess what color I'm going to get? It's going to be mud. So I'm going to pull this off and I'm going to go run it under the water at the sink and clean it off. So now it's all clean, but it's wet. So I'm just going to take a paper towel and get it dry. Now I'm ready to bring in the next color. And I'm going to bring in, I want to put some orange and I want some circles with it. So I'm going to bring in my Circles Layer Me stencil. The blue is not totally dry over here, but because it was such a small amount, well, it's okay, it's still a little damp over there too, but it'll be dry enough. It'll be fine. Yeah, yeah, that's what I tell myself. It'll be fine. So I've got this, got the orange, and I'm just gonna put it right on here. When I first start, because there's more paint on it, I'm gonna get more coverage. And when I start to run low or it dries out, which it's not drying out, but. Anyway, I find that very funny that I kept calling it that. Probably not really that funny, but it sure as heck is entertaining to me. And then I want to put a little bit more orange up here. So sticking with the same amount, 
on that brush, I'm just going to put it right there. Oh, look, I got some great little mis uh, oops, mistakes, smears, whatever you want to call it, but I like that little bit of orange there. So I'm just going to kind of add a little touch of orange here and there with the tool. All right, so I've given this a little time to dry, and I want it to look a little bit older, more aged. So that's where I'm going to bring in the sandpaper. They have a fine and they have a coarse. Of course, I'm going to go with the coarse. Trick is to let the machine do the work, let the groove do the work instead of me. And what I want to do is just kind of scruff this up. Just want to make it look a little aged. I like the aged look here. Oops, I'm smearing blue paint. Guess it wasn't totally dry. Oh well. But this orange just looks a little too new to me. And so you can see I'm trying, got to get in that habit of letting the tool do the work for me. And so what it's doing is adding a little bit of scratchiness to it. There's wipe off the, the dust from that, as you always get with sanding. And I still want to bring a little bit more over here. Now, I don't know if I mentioned, but there are two speeds to this, a high and a low. So depending on what you want to do and how you want to do it and scruff things up, you can go either high or low. Alrighty, the last bit of this, I want to add some white to it. I worked so hard to get rid of white space, and then I put it back in. And I actually want to come around my orange circles and just really loosely trace around them. Nothing precise. Part of why I like these circles is they have that sort of wibbly-wobbly, handmade, hand-drawn kind of feel to them because, well, it was a hand-drawn circle. And so I'm just going to kind of add a little bit here and there to this, completing circles or not completing them, making them perfect. Okay, not going to make any of them perfect. We both know that because I don't really do perfect. But I do have fun. All right, so now I need some journaling on here because for me, an art journaling page is about capturing that feeling. Got the sort of travel vibe going on here. So I'm going to write a little bit about traveling. And I'm going to call this art journal page not finished yet. There's something else I want to do to it. So I'm going to let this dry and I will come back. Okay, so here's what I want to do to it because this white to me just looks so pristine. I am actually going to bring the sandpaper back in again on high, just to give me a little bit of rough up. Not a lot, but just a little, you know, just that little bit of touch. Okay, so what's my final opinion about this groove tool? Well, noise level, even on high, not too loud for me. Was it easy to clean? You betcha these things that just come right off. This washed off very, very easily from the paint, so that's a plus. The fact that I could change the head so quickly and easily made me actually, or didn't make me, it led me to actually use the sandpaper, which I've actually got a drawer full of sandpaper, but I don't use it. I absolutely don't get it out, but for some reason with this, it was so easy to do, I actually used that sandpaper. And now I might actually do more of it because I really like that little bit of touch that it gave to it by creating the scratchy lines in it. And the last thing is, yes, it did actually make it all go a lot faster. It was so much faster to stencil that using this tool than if I'd done it without it. So for me, this tool is a win-win because it makes things fast and easy, and that's the way I like it. Well, thanks for joining me for today's video. If you've enjoyed this video, I'd love it if you gave it a thumbs up and, of course, shared it with your friends. And if you'd like to see more of my videos, hit that subscribe button, and that way you'll never miss when I have a new video. Thanks for being a part of this colorful journey.